We are having a wonderful time in the Andalusia region of southern Spain. And this is actually the second video that we are creating about Spain. So if you didn't catch the first one where I talk about our two tips for being present, then go ahead and check out the link in the comments below this one so that you can watch that video after this one. So yeah, we're continuing to have a fantastic time visiting beautiful parts of this incredible region of Spain. We've seen some gorgeous towns and cities and landscapes, nature. Some of the places that we've enjoyed are the town or small city of Ronda. Uh, Seville was absolutely gorgeous and we really loved the town of Antuquera and the nature around that town uh, and some incredible um, ancient burial tombs. Oh my goodness, we've just seen and done so many wonderful and amazing things. When we originally planned to go on this long extended trip, we knew that there would be some challenges, but we didn't know what they were going to be. And it turns out that so far, the biggest challenge that we've been dealing with is trying to find a balance between working, because this is an extended trip, so we're bringing our work with us, and trying to find a balance between enjoying, exploring, moving frequently, the time that it takes to explore and research where to go next and all the things that that involves, and just finding that, that time balance, juggling work, juggling travel, and also with our teenage daughter because we're world schooling her along the way as well. So it's really been a time balance juggle and it's been trickier than what we imagined. I mean, for me, my, my Soul Space membership is a very important and integral part of my work. And every week I bring beautiful new content to the members and I'm very devoted to that and I love that. And that work along with bringing you new and beautiful videos and sharing this journey with you, um, that's very important to me. And fitting that in around the travel schedule where we don't have the regular kind of routine that we're used to, that's been our biggest challenge, the juggle, the balance. So what I found is that this week I started to feel some pretty strong feelings of time pressure and overwhelm. And even though I am in a constant daily practice of putting into practice all the principles that I teach about in how to manage my thoughts, emotions, and energy for a happy way of being, every now and then I can still get things like overwhelm crop up, but I know exactly what to do with it when it comes up and how to quickly shift it. So I want to share with you a really simple strategy for exactly how I handle overwhelm so that I can quickly come back to feeling peaceful, calm and happy again. So the first thing is to really understand what overwhelm is, what's going on behind it. And that is that when we're overwhelmed, we're believing that we have too much to do for the available time. We're believing that we just can't get done everything that needs to be done. Now here's the thing, when we really come into the now, when we just get present and we are able to detach from all of those beliefs and stories about not having enough time, overwhelm does not exist. It cannot exist in the now. Overwhelm is just thoughts. It's thoughts that are saying, I don't have enough time or I've got too much to do in the available time. And when we can just come into the now, that disappears. But I wanna give you three really practical strategies that you can use 
as well as just reminding yourself of what I just said, that overwhelm does not exist in the now and overwhelm is just some untrue beliefs that you are not going to be able to do what you need to do in the available time. The thing is, you'll always cope. You'll just get done what gets done. Now use these three tips so that you can easily focus on what's most important and catch and shift those stressful thoughts. So the first thing is to shrink it down. Now what this is, is a simple mindset technique where you just take those thoughts of what you need to do, which if you're feeling very overwhelmed, you've blown them up to be really big in your mind. So I want you to think about those most important things that it is that you believe you need to get done. And I want you to imagine just shrinking them down. It's like you're shrinking them down in bigness, in importance, so that they just feel a lot more easy and manageable so that they don't feel huge in your head. So just imagine just shrinking them down. And then the second part is break it down. So when we're overwhelmed, we often just see what needs to be done, whether it's lots of tasks or one big task. We see all those things as not only being really big, but we're believing that we've got to get it all done now or very soon. We can break it down into small manageable chunks. By breaking it down, it's like chopping up something big into little pieces so that it feels easier, it feels more doable. And here's the thing, you only ever have now and then the next now and the next now and all you ever need to deal with is what's in front of you now. So by chunking it down, breaking it down into little pieces, you can just think, what's the next most important thing that needs to be done? Breaking the big task up into little tasks. And that brings me to the third part of this strategy. And that is to ask, what's a priority? That is such a simple question, but when we are in a state of overwhelm, we are stressed and we're not using the best of our executive functioning. We're not using really well our best thinking skills. So that's where this strategy comes into play and helps you to start really activating your intelligence, your prefrontal cortex by going through these steps. So by saying, what is a priority? It stops you from ruminating and seeing all these things that you need to do. And I have noticed that when I am in stressful thoughts of overwhelm, I do the opposite to saying what's a priority because I focus on so many things and I it's almost like my mind gathers every tiny little detail of every single thing that ever needs to be done in the near future and is piling them all up. So by saying what is a priority, it helps me to just really hone in on what is the most important thing. The truth is that there is always time for the most important things. So let's go over those three steps again. One, shrink it down. Just mentally shrink down the task or all the tasks that you need to do. Just imagine it in your mind as not being so big. Shrink it down in importance. Just remind yourself, I've got this. I can do this. It's not such a big deal. Two, break it down. Break it down into little chunks. And three, ask what's a priority? And that way you can focus on the number one first thing that needs to be done now. And that's all you need to do. And then there'll be the next now and the next priority. Remember that when the mind is very stressed, it can get very illogical and we're not using our intelligence to its best. When we're stressed, the prefrontal cortex and our executive functioning goes offline. 
So by doing these three steps, it helps to bring you back to the now and focus on what's most important and to feel really good again. So remember that point that I made at the beginning, and that is that overwhelm does not exist in the now. It doesn't. It's really just thoughts in our mind, and there's always enough time for the most important things. I hope that you've enjoyed watching some of the beautiful footage of our time in Spain, and I hope that this technique will help you the next time that you feel overwhelm or time pressure. It really does work. Now, if you want to learn everything you need to know to change the way you think, feel and act for a happier way of being in just 21 days, then check out my 21 day happiness reset. This is what everyone should have learned growing up, but didn't. There's a link somewhere here on this video and I will also link it in the notes below. Thank you so much for being here. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.